بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد As servants of Allah we need to show our gratitude and gratitude is displayed through ibadah and this gratitude comes self-motivated when someone saves your life or a person is in a serious problem then we are indebted to them till our last breath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us everything our entire existence is based on His favor and ihsan and we only got one chance to get it right. So every amal should be done with ikhlas, with sincerity. We are making tilawat of Qur'an with sincerity, the intentions that we need to be making. The stronger the intention, the more the effect and the consequences and benefit. Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash used to say, ما سبقنا أبو بكر بكثير صلاة ولا سيام ولكنه الإيمان That Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه had not surpassed us through his excessive salat, excessive fasting but because of the Iman that was engraved in his heart والنس لخلقه and his fikr for the concern and the hidayat of mankind. That strong Iman which is in the heart motivates a person to desire every person other than himself to get this hidayat, to get this fikr for akhirat, to get this fikr for finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to say, Rubba amalin saghirin tu'adhimuhu anniya. That Certain small actions are such that niya, the intentions, will magnify it and will multiply the reward. وَرُبَّ عَمَلٍ كَبِيرٍ تُسَغِّرُهُ النِّيَّةً Such great actions a person will do, but the niya will destroy it and wipe out the reward. So a person will do a small amal like in the riwayat, مَنْ تَسَّدَّقَ بِأَدْلِي تَمْرَةٍ مِنْ كَسْبٍ طَيِّبٍ Somebody gives in charity something equal to the date from his honestly earned wealth. وَلَا يَسْعَدُ إِلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا الطَّيِّبِ And nothing ascends to Allah except that which is good, that which is pure. فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ يَتَقَبَّلُهَا بِيَمِينِهِ Then Allah will take it with His right hand, bring it up for the owner, the one who has a baby horse and how you groom and grow that horse and look after that horse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after that action hatta takuna mithl al-jabali until it becomes like a mountain. Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha' Allama ibn Kathir and this ayah explains that Allah will multiply our reward بِحَسْبِ إِخْلَاسِهِ فِي عَمَلِهِ It will be based on the sincerity of the action, the stronger the sincerity, the greater the niya, and the more he keeps his amal in secrecy where nobody will see it. Then this qualifies a person to be under the arsh of Allah and he quoted the hadith of كَمَا قَالْ سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ Seven people will be under the arsh and the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there will be no shade. It will be the one who gave sadaqah فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى تَعْلَمْ He will hide it such that his right hand does not know from his left hand. So much he will do for secrecy. So people that do the a'mal in secrecy warrant them to be under the arsh of Allah SWT. So deen is easy, deen is simple. It is up to us to decide how much reward we want to get in akhirah based on our sincerity. So a person needs to be checking their intention on every amal. Ad-deenu yusrun. Deen is very easy. There was a beautiful pious princess who got a lot of proposals and there were a lot of people who wanted to marry her. So the king and the queen made mashwara and they decided that let us stipulate a criteria. And the criteria they came up with was the person who makes a khatam of the Qur'an every day, fast for the entire year and stay awake for the entire night. So she was renowned for beauty but not many people qualified for the conditions except one person who got ready and proclaimed that he fulfilled the criteria. 
And even if anybody wanted to do it, it would take them time to prove the history. They couldn't have just done it overnight. So this Molana got ready. He came forward. They questioned him. He agreed. He fulfilled the terms. Lawyers were brought in. Agreements were drawn up. And uh, the date for the nikah was set. So after one week, it was seen that he doesn't make a khatam every day, nor does he fast, nor does he stay awake at night for ibadah, but he's snoozing. So the wife had an objection, so it was taken in front of the qadi, the judge. The judge asked the wife, what is your case claim? So she replied, he doesn't fulfill the conditions. So they asked the husband, that are you fulfilling the conditions of the marriage? He said, yes. He said, what are the conditions? To recite the entire Quran daily, to keep for the fast for the entire year and to make ibadah to be uh, in worship the entire night. So the judge asked, did you fulfill the requirements? He said, yes. So the judge said, what is your proof? So he said that uh, according to the report, you do not do any of this here. And there's an annulment arrangement in, in, in place. So the man said, no, I fulfill the conditions. She said, Maulana, explain to us, do you recite a full Quran every day? He said, yes. The judge was baffled. How can you do that? The man said, I read Surah Ikhlas three times. Nabi alayhi salam has said that you get the reward of the entire Quran. It's like reciting the entire Quran. So the judge was very intrigued and amazed. So he says, how do you fast the entire year? So he said, very simple also. Nabi alayhi salam said, if you fast the whole month of Ramadan and the sixth of Shawwal, then you have fasted the entire year. So judge again was quiet now and he thought so this last one maybe he won't qualify. Do you stay awake the entire night when she's seen you sleeping? So he said no I perform Salatul Isha with Jama'ah and Salatul Fajr with Jama'ah and according to the hadith Whoever performs it like that, he will get a reward of making up. It is like he stayed up the entire night in worship. So the judge was now perplexed and he needed to make the final verdict. And he told the person, just go, there's nothing wrong with this contract. So the princess was there, so they asked her, she was silent, she didn't know what to say. So they asked her that, uh, do you think so you're able to live with this man? What do you want to do now? She said, I, I, I will gladly live with him. So they were shocked. And what condition now? She said, if he knows the shortcuts to Jannah, I might as well join him. I might as well join him. He got it right with me. I'm hopeful he'll get it right in Akhirat as well. So, Adinu Yusrun. Deen is very easy. It is up to us now to see how much we want to strive. And the near Taqwa. We need to inculcate this Taqwa. What is Taqwa? Is it Ali ibn Abi Talib? Radhi Allah anhu say, at taqwa hi al khawfu min al jalil. To have the fear of Allah. When you're doing any wrong, you will remember that Allah is watching you. And every good you will do good because you know that your Allah will be displeased when you don't do that action. Wal amalu bit tanzil. And to make amal on the Quran, Mubarak. Wal kana'a bil qalil. And to be contented with little bit. Wal istadi'ad li yawmir rahil. And to be prepared. For the day when you depart for Akhirat. So Taqwa is very emphasized. Different ayat of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighted. Annahu la ilaha illa anna fattaqoon. Command. Adopt Taqwa. Wa inna hadhihi ummatukum ummata wahida. Wa anna rabbukum fattaqoon. I am your Rabb. So adopt Taqwa. Thalika yukhawifullahu bihi ibadah. Allah warns his servants. Ya ibadi fattaqoon, O my beloved servants, now adopt taqwa. Ya ayyuhalladhina amad taqullaha haqqa tuqati. O people of Iman, adopt taqwa how it should be. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. And die in the condition of Iman. Wa attaqullaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham. Fiyad sallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa laqad wassayna alladhina utul kitaba min qablikum. وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ And we've advised the people of the past that adopt taqwa. Even Anbiya alayhimu salatu salam in advising the people إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوْمْ نُوْهُنْ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ نُوْهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ 
أدب تقوى هود عليه السلام إذ قال لهم أخوم هود ألا تتقون صالي عليه السلام إذ قال لهم أخوم صالي ألا تتقون لوط عليه السلام إذ قال لهم أخوم لوط ألا تتقون شعب عليه السلام إذ قال لهم شعيب ألا تتقون إبراهيم عليه السلام إذ قال لقوم عبد الله واتقوه ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون أدب تقوى so amongst the benefits of taqwa is وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever adopts taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove all the difficulties and make it easy for whatever situation and difficulties we are in. Alamah have stated the greatest ayah in the Quran that contains relief is this ayah ya وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will make a way for every person. Imam Qurtubi has mentioned a riwayat where Nabi alayhi salam has said إِنِّي لَعَلَمُ آيَةً لَوْ أَخَذَ بِهَا النَّاسِ لَكَفَتْهُمْ I know in ayah if people hold steadfast onto it, it will suffice for them and it is the same ayah. Likewise Ibn Abbas has mentioned that Nabi alayhi salam read this ayah and said that it is a opening from مِنْ شُبْهَاتِ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْ غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَمِنْ شَدَائِدِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ that from all the difficulties and trials of dunya, difficulties at the time of death and the hardships on the day of Qiyamah. And uh, another mention, Najatuhu min kulli karbin, all difficulties in dunya and akhirat. A rewrite of Jabirin Abdullah, that this ayah was revealed for regarding Auf bin Malik al-Shi'i, where he, he wa, his son was imprisoned, his name was Salim, and uh, he came to Nabi alayhi salam wa shaka ilayhi al and he told Nabi alayhi salam this is the situation my son has been imprisoned the wife is very stressed we are suffering from poverty fama ta'muruni what do you encourage me to do so Nabi alayhi salam said aw kama qal ittaqillah wa sabir fear Allah and be patient and I command you and your family an tastak thira min qawli la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah excessively recite لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So he returned home. He told his wife, and they made amal on this advice. And it so happened that his son managed to escape. During the escape, he seen the animals, so he brought the animals. He entered Medina Munawwara free with four thousand sheep. And Nabi Ali Salam said those sheep are halal for him. So taqwa is a key to many doors and treasures and openings. The story of the three people who were trapped in a cave and each one put forward an amal. The first amal was where you give preference of the command of Allah, where Allah says your parents are more important than yourself and than your family. So he went to fetch Malki, came home, the parents are sleeping. He waited at the bed until dawn. And when the parents woke up, he gave them the milk. So he said, Ya Allah, I did this amal for you. Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu thalika ibtigha wajhik. Ya Allah, I did only for your pleasure. Fafarrij anna ma nahnu fihi min hadhihi s-sakhra. So Allah help us. And that boulder, the rock moved. Likewise, the second person was in a position of compromise to commit zina. So when a text message come, that WhatsApp, that website is in front of you, that sweet voice, at the other end of the line. So he had an opposition, a, 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 a proposal, an opportunity to, to commit zina and contravene Allah's command. And when he was close to doing that, he remembered Allah فَانْصَرَفْتُ عَنْهَا وَهِيَ أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَيَّ That he retracted, although she was the most beloved person on earth, but he never committed that crime. And he made dua to Allah. Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu thalika ibtigha'a wajhik fafruj anna ma nahnu fihi. Ya Allah, if I did this for your sake, then help me. So through this baraka amal, Allah moved the bowl. The last one was with hukukul ibad. So hukukul ibad, hukukullah, and now business dealing transactions. So many people fail in their businesses. They compromise. They don't check whether their risk is halal. Likewise, they are not particular about 
spending the wealth etc so business dealings people comprom compromise very easily so there was an employee and he left there was an amount owing he invested it and there was a lot of benefits when the person came he said Kullu ma tara min ajrik. Everything that you see, min al ibili wal bakari wal ghanimi wal raqiki, the slaves, the the servants, the cows, the sheep, the camels, everything is yours that you see. So that person was shocked. He said, Ya Abdullah, la tasta zibi. Don't joke. It's not possible. So he said, La tasta zibi. I'm not joking. He took everything and left nothing for him. He said, Ya Allah, I did it for your sake. Accept that amal, and the boulder moved. So taqwa will stop a person from compromising when nobody else is watching. We don't need anybody else to see. And taqwa will be a motivating factor. It will be sufficient. There was a youngster from Bani Israel and he was extremely attractive and handsome. He used to make baskets and sell them. One day he passed by the door of the king and the assistant seen him and he was very handsome so she ran to the queen and informed her she summoned him in as he came in she looked at him and she was amazed at his handsomeness so she said this basket don't waste your life selling this year spend your time with me I will suffice for all your needs she told the servant bring the aromatic oils the fragrant perfumes and he will please himself I will please myself we will fulfill our desires and uh, he refused. So she said, you're not going to leave here. Do as I tell you. The doors are locked. You cannot go anywhere. <clears throat> so he thought of a plan of escaping. So he said, is there any other room here? There was the penthouse. He said, I need to go prepare myself for you. He searched for an escape. He never got it right. And he told himself, Ya nafs, anti mundu sabayna sana tatlubina rida rab. For 70 years you've been seeking Allah's pleasure. Seeking Allah's pleasure day and night. Ja'atka ashiyatun wahida. One night has come, one day has come, and it'll spoil your amal, your entire life. Does not can did not happen. He decided to jump from the balcony. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness in the sin, Jibril alayhi salam. That my servant is there and he's running from disobedience to my obedience. Make sure no harm comes to him. So taqwa. Allah opens up more beyond that we can fathom. Jibreel Islam caught him with his wing, brought, put him down, he came back home, he had nothing. The wife said, what, what sales have you done? He said, nothing. What will we eat? We will make sabr tonight. And uh, light the stove, switch the stove on, put the fire on so the neighbors don't know we spend the night hungry. So much consideration, he didn't want to give inconvenience to his neighbors as well. Nowadays we intentionally give harm to our neighbors. Our closest neighbor is our wife in our bed. So we need to be particular spouses, husbands and wife, not to give each other taklif. Anyway, the wife lit the fire, then the neighbor knocked the door and she said, I want a flame to light my stove. And she said, proceed to the stove. And then the neighbor came and she was in panic. And uh, she said that, uh, what are you sitting here talking to this person when your food is going to burn. So she ran to the kitchen, she found that the brain what bread was in the oven, completely baked. So she took all of that to eat and she told the husband, In Rabbakalam Yasna Bikahada illa wanta alayhi kareem. You must have done some good deed. But Allah Yabsuta Alayna Bakiat Umrina Asallah to give us risk forever. So he said that uh, be patient and she continued to invoke him until he agreed. So he made dua. So he said, Allahumma inna zawjati sa'alatni fa'atiha ma tatawassa bihi fi baqiyata fi baqiyati umriha. That you'll give her what she needs for the rest of the, her life. And fan faraja saqf, a tray suddenly appeared which broke through the roof with a precious jewel which shone as bright as the sun and the entire house lit up. He shook his wife to get up. And she said, why are you waking me up? He said, now what's happening here now? You got what you wanted. She said, no, I seen a dream with throne, uh, golden thrones were studded with jewels and green emeralds. There was a gap, a flaw, an abnormality, a jewel that was missing. Asked, what was this? They said that your husband made a dua and you got it in dunya. 
So this floor, this cavity is because of that dua. So she said, I don't want it. I, I rather have it in akhirat. So udu rabbaka fada'a rabbaw faraja'a al-kaf. He made dua and the jewel returned. So that is the barakah of taqwa that Allah's unseen treasures open up. The amal for today is if a person is patient when their family, friend, relative passes away and they have hopeful for reward ثُمَّ اَحْتَسَبَهُ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ and they hope for reward from Allah, then they will get Jannah. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ